How's it going? Today we're going to be installing a Soundtrack Tsunami 2 decoder into this Broadway Limited K4. Some reasons why you would want to install Tsunami 2 into Broadway Limited is to maybe improve sound quality or maybe run quality. However, this one is a little bit different. This engine has a, let's say, tendency to go crazy when trying to go into reverse on a couple of different layouts. This engine is now on my home layout on rollers to show an example. Whenever I go forward, the engine will run smoothly going forward. However, when I switch the model to reverse, that's when the engine goes extremely fast forward and I can't do anything about it. CV8 doesn't solve anything. So after all the troubleshooting we went through, we decided it's best to remove the decoder and install a new decoder because this engine runs gorgeously. It's just the brains is what the problem is. Well, let's get started. First step is going to be removing the tender from the engine. This will make it very easy to work on the engine and the tender separately. So I'm using tweezers to remove that eight plug pin, just moving the sides very slowly to unplug it. And then going to be separating the tender from the engine by just pulling apart. There are three screws that hold the shell together. One is underneath the leading truck. And there's two underneath the trailing truck. I'm unplugging the five plug pin that connects the chassis to the lighting circuit on the shell so I can remove the screws on the shell a lot easier. There are eight screws that hold the side skirts to the shell. I'm going to removing all eight so I can access the circuit easier and cut the wires, solder wires, etc. a lot easier. With the side skirts aside, we are going to be unplugging the smoke generator. The smoke generator does not work with Tsunami 2, therefore it will not be working, but I am going to leave it inside the engine because it will look a lot better looking down the smokestack and also adds a little bit of weight. Now we can cut off the wiring harness from the lighting circuit, so we can use those wires for later. Now from all those wires, we want to keep the side that's from the engine circuit, and we can cut and remove the smoke circuit side, and we can just throw it away. But make sure you keep enough wire for length. I made this little diagram for Microsoft Paint to hopefully show a better visual of what I'm doing here. I'm showing all the wires that I'm cutting, and I'm showing what wires are going to go where in the future. That diagram shows this small circuit right here, saying to cut the white wire, the brown, and the gray wire. I want to mention that all the visuals I'm showing through Microsoft Paint are specific for this model. If you're referencing this to any other BLI engine, I cannot guarantee they will be the same. Next, in the circuit in front of the motor, we want to remove the brown wire and the black wire. The gray is the track right rail, and we're not going to touch that. This diagram I also made in Microsoft Paint, showing the eight plug pin from the engine. On the left is the original from factory, and the right is the one I'm going to be using. I'm cutting pin three before it reaches the circuit because that is originally from the Paragon 3 Rolling Thunder antenna and I'm actually not too sure if it has anything to do with the circuit. So I'm actually cutting the wire before it reaches the circuit and then adding wire so I can use that as my cab light lead. Another reason why I'm doing this is because I want to have my FX functions from the decoder to individual lighting outputs. I don't want to have my headlight tied to my cab light. I want to have them all individuals. So adding one more wire by cutting this helps me accomplish that goal of having my cab light, headlight, marker light, all different functions. And once it's cut, I'm going to be soldering on extra wire to increase the length and heat shrink.
This diagram shows how I am wiring the circuit from the engine circuit to the four plug pin, the lighting circuit underneath the shell. And I'll be using heat shrink as well as tinning the wires and soldering them together. Now that the harness is all wired up, now it's for the tricky part. We're going to have to switch the polarity for every light in this engine. For whatever reason, Broadway Limited decided to use a ground instead of a common, like most manufacturers do. So LEDs are polarity based, meaning that they can only turn on with the correct positive and the correct negative leads. So if we wired this up normally without switching these around, the LEDs would never turn on. So we're going to have to flip the polarities. All we have to do is switch the wires, the negative to the positive and the positive to the negative. And that's what we're doing first with the cab light. Second will be headlight and the third will be all the marker lights. The headlight is very similar to the cab light. All we're doing is switching the positive and negatives around. As for the marker lamps, I did lose my video. My video unfortunately got corrupted, so I only have photos to show you how I did it. But all we have to do is remove that resistor that's on the board and add the wire from the positive lead to the resistor spot and the negative lead to the negative spot. And then we're going to cut the negative wire in half and add a resistor. I'm using 1K ohm resistors, quarter watts, which will drop the 12 volts from the Tsunami decoder to three. Here's the finished product with my resistors hooked up to the negative wire on the classification lights. All that's done. We are done with the locomotive side of this installation. So let's screw it all back together. Don't forget to reconnect the new modified four pin plug that we soldered all the wires together so all the lighting functions will work. Making sure that everything is plugged in and all screws are screwed down, it's time to move the chassis back into the shell. Make sure that the wire harness on the right side of the screen is not being pinched by anything and make sure it's free and able to move around. Once satisfied, replace the three screws from the engine and we'll move on to the tender. For this installation, I will be using Tsunami Tube Steam 2 decoder as well as a current keeper. Opening the tender is just as easy as the engine, except there are four screws, one on each corner. We're going to be removing pretty much everything you see except the speakers and the plug that is connecting to the engine. Now the owner of this model did install a GoPack, so if you have a GoPack installed, it's as simple as unplugging it, as well as disconnecting all the other connectors.
Same idea, we're going to be cutting off the connectors that used to go to the previous board because we don't need them anymore. The front tender truck, which is the black wire, is the left rail, and the rear tender truck, which is the gray wire, is the right rail. So we want to make sure we connect those to the decoder as well as the 8 plug pin. Here I want to show how I plan on mounting the decoder. I do end up moving it later in the video, but the idea is the same. I'm going to extend all the wires and just place it on this little plate. I'm going to keep this plate because the speakers are right underneath and I don't want the decoder laying on top of the speakers. I'm going to be using 3M double sided tape to mount the decoder. It is plenty strong, you don't need a whole lot, and just place it on top of the plate. This diagram is from Soundtracks and it's the installation guide or wiring guide on how to wire their decoders and what wires go where. This is the one I'm going to be following as well as the one I made from Microsoft Paint. I'm hoping this diagram will give you a better picture of how I'm wiring this locomotive because it could be a little tricky trying to custom make and wire chase and I'm hoping this will make it a whole lot easier for you to do yourself. I'm wiring the black wire from the decoder and going to be soldering the 8 pin from the 8 plug pin and the black wire from the front truck together. I'm going to be time lapsing a little bit of this part because it's pretty much rinse and repeat where we strip the wire, tin it, and solder the wires together using that diagram I made. Except the blue wire is a little bit different. I'm actually going to add an extension for the rear light and the rear marker lights. Since the blue wire is going to be under heat shrink, I just want to make sure that I'll be able to get the blue wire to the rear light and the rear marker lights. Using the two purple wires from the decoder, I'm going to be soldering to the red and black wire from the factory speakers because they sound great already and I'm just going to be reusing them. Another tricky part about this installation is going to be the rear and marker lamps on the tender. The original circuit board was wired in a way so that we could not flip the polarity of the LEDs without literally removing the LEDs from the circuit board. And unless you're a extreme professional with a very steady hand, if you can 
literally turn around the LEDs. You're amazing. I couldn't. So I decided I'm just going to rip it out and put LEDs on my own. I'm using warm white LEDs that came from eBay. They come pre-wired. They're size 402 and they're fit perfectly for this job. And I'm holding it down with some Tamiya masking tape. I would not recommend using electrical tape for this procedure because over time electrical tape will get very gunky, gooey, and if you ever have to replace these LEDs, it's not going to be a pretty sight in the future. So I like to come prepared and use masking tape just so for the future it'll be a lot easier to come off. 19. Using that blue wire extension we made, we are using it to wire the red wires that came from the LEDs all together at once. Then the black wire from the rear light, which is the middle light, will go to the yellow. And then the two marker lamps will go to resistors, which will go to the green and white striped. I lost the footage of me soldering the yellow wire and the rear light wire together, but it's the same rinse and repeat as well as here. We're going to solder the green and white stripe to two resistors so we can put each black wire from the marker lamps onto those resistors. Like I said before, I did end up moving the decoder over for the current keeper. I did forget to film plugging in the current keeper, but it's easy as taking an X-Acto blade, cutting a little bit of the heat shrink from the decoder, and plugging in the current keeper. Now is the best part, putting the model all back together and hoping nothing went wrong and you don't have to open it ever again. When closing the shell, make sure we're not leaving any exposed wires like you see here I'm just using tweezers to push that back in don't forget to replace the four screws on the bottom on each corner just make sure we're not pinching any wires on the outside Finally, plug the 8 plug pin back into the tender and the connector. With all that done, all that hard work, let's put her on the track. When you place her on the track and she starts shorting, make sure you've isolated every wire. When track power is turned on and she works fine with sound, I make sure all the lights work by pressing F0, F24, 25, and 26. I must admit, I did get pretty lucky. I had nothing go wrong. I never had to open up the model again. Headlight work, marker lights work, cab light, rear light, rear marker lights, motor, everything all worked and I couldn't be more happy with the result. It's a perfect model now. Now that testing is complete, the best part is to stare at her.
Enough staring at her. Let's see her perform on the layout. I knew this was going to be a long video, and if you made it all the way, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. I had a blast filming this. Overall, it took about maybe six hours to complete the installation, but I would say two and a half of it was probably just wire chasing and me swearing at the model. But until next time, I'll see you then.